So step one is to realize that you've been trying too hard. Step two is being cool with just letting down your guard. Step three is to agree that not everyone is going to like you. Step four is coming to terms. That's just something you got to fight through. Step five is a deep dive below who you think you're supposed to be. Step six is to identify the areas in which you do not agree. And step seven is to feel the tension that authenticity often brings. Step eight is to be okay if no one listens while you sing. Step nine is when you find your sense of self and are at peace. And step 10 is when you genuinely believe there's no one else you'd rather be. And without an ounce of irony, you let these seven words slip free. Damn, it feels good to be me. <laughs> how's, uh, how's your headphones? Dude, sounds good. Okay, just want to make sure, because you're a musician. You, you put of these course, on all the time. Of course, gotta be right. <laughs> And uh, I, I know about this microphone. This is where they, they recorded Thriller off of. Oh, sick. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Oh, so I went to school for music. I was trying to be like you, but then I was like, oh, I'm Dude, not I listened to some of your music. Really? Yeah. I think The Heart of David is the only one that I actually... Pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, man. I That's really a freestyle? That was a freestyle. And, and to be honest, that wasn't even made... Like, it wasn't made to be a song. My, my friend uh, produces for like really cool musicians and my other well we just got into it but i was okay. gonna go roll it right into it uh <laughs> my friend is a huge fan of all these people he produces for and i was just introducing him yeah and uh while i got there i had a dream about him and so like on the phone when i was heading over i was like oh dude i had a dream about you last night that you like produced me this song and you know how, like you have a dream but you forget about it until yeah. you see the person or you see the situation yeah. and that's what happened and he goes he goes dude I had a dream I produced your song. And I, I stopped music like five, six years ago because my friends are like, they all gathered, sat me down, and they were like, hey, man, we need to talk. Stop. Really? Yeah. yeah I mean, but dude, it's because I, I like truly with <laughs> all of the phone. What are you talking about? I'll give you like a quick. like, <laughs> and, a just, and you're like, this was a good thing. Well, I think it was just sometimes you need to hear the hard lessons. And, and I, and I kind of took it to heart. So this is what happened. I, I started out in the third grade real quick dancing. Then I got into music. Uh, I, I taught myself how to play the piano, uh, write music. Um, I entered a competition. I got to even perform at Justin Bieber's concert for it. My song was on the radio in Arizona. I thought, this is it. I'm famous. Yeah. Nothing happened from it. And then I went to school for audio engineering. That's how I knew about all the microphones and what they do. Yeah. And then I came out here to intern. And as I was interning, Justin Bieber was in the studio. And I wasn't allowed to talk to him. So then I hated the, like, they treated you like shit in the music industry if you're at, the, like, the bottom. So yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck this. I'm going to go and, and be a songwriter, and, and I'm just going to do this myself. And then I went, and I started, you know, writing, like, Feel So Alive and all these things. And then uh, my friends in L.A., they all sat me down. They go, hey, man, you're real good in Arizona. Like, you're real good <laughs> in the talent shows. Uh, but in real life, like, here in L.A., like, you're fucking trash. Like, you need to stop. And, and so, like, I kind of reflected it, and I just got into the comedy thing, and and like telling jokes, writing skits and all that stuff, it was just so natural to me. I hear that. As for you, probably for music, okay. that I was like, okay, this is my strong suit. And then one day, God willing, if that door opens up, I'll, I'll hop that, I'll hop into I that. would say the stop is the only issue that I have, uh, that I take issue well, with. Well, we back. That's what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I think if your friends sit you down and go like, uh, what, you're, what, you ha what you're doing is like not at a high enough level, that, that's good friends. No, no, dude. If you see my... You know that music... I don't know if you ever looked my music videos up, but that music video that I had that looked like a like a very expensive real music video, Yeah, I was like 15 years old. That was shot by my cousin. My dad produced the whole thing. Like We were doing this be, like, before it was like cool to create your own content. Totally. I was really into it. I even have some embarrassing ones where like I sang to Selena Gomez and shit. And, like, I took oh, that shit. That. Like, that was... That, but it's not about me, man. I'm very Hold excited on, before, about this before podcast. Before we move on, I, I, I listened to, on the way over here, uh, I listened to your Spotify. I listened to the five songs that were on there. I appreciate it. And if I was one of your friends, I would say, uh, this is okay, but the way you get here is by doing 100 more. True. I only so, it, like but, so, so stop is not what should happen, I don't think. Well, do you want to make a song with me? Let's do it. Yes. yes. <laughs> I will sell my house I'm to saying, make that happen. I'm saying, like, <laughs> I think one of the hardest parts of being in 2023 is that like there's so many available options mm -hmm. to, to, to your self-expression. Yes. So I think there is real validity to saying like, oh, man, what's coming easiest to me right now? Like, let me chase that. Let me mm. go after that. Let me find my way. Yeah. But I heard a tone in your voice that was cool. I heard your freestyle was cool. And it might just be like anything else. You might be like 100 away, 100 songs. That's what I tell every songwriter. Like I think write a hundred songs and you'll find that you're like, you'll know a lot more about you. You have yourself. to put in your hours. Yeah. 
This video is sponsored by Aura.com. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but I like to Google myself and see what kind of I can find. And there's some out there that should be found, okay? And I've used Aura to scrub the online so they don't have any of my personal information. Because believe it or not, there's some scummy, scummy people out there that get profits off of selling your information. And that's not something you want, especially when it gets into the dark web, because that could get dark real quick. So if you want to check online and protect yourself, have a layer of security, go to Aura.com forward slash George and use my code to get two weeks off. In that two weeks, you're going to find some stuff that you don't want out there and you're going to want to scrub. So the link is in my description. If you guys want to check and protect yourself online, go to aura.com forward slash George. Do it. Trust me. Do it, my man or my lady. I don't know what kind of pics you're posting. Like you want to cover that up. Leave the stuff on there, but just cover like the phone numbers. You know, you don't want any of that stuff. Like your mom's number is out there. Your number, your ex is the, I could, the ex could be out there. In fact, everybody was probably already calling her. Let's just move on to the program because I just, I went down a street that I probably shouldn't have gone. Aura.com forward slash George. I, I think, um, I think you're right. And I think God willing, one day I can mix both the worlds. I guess my dream one day would to be, because I love performing live. Yeah. And I don't got to tell you this. Yeah, you, you, you know that more than anybody. Uh, when I came into stand up, that's when I was like, oh, this is what I love about performing. I forgot about it. Cool. The, 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 the clicks and the likes, super blessed for it. Obviously it's, it's paid for everything that I, I I'm, I'm dreaming about, but the, I would take 200 people in a crowd versus a million views any day because just mm. the sheer of like them getting ready, looking at you, getting excited, throwing their energy at you. It's, it's, it's so much different than just reading comments. LOL. This it's is a good. Different like, you know what I mean? like, it's a really different experience. I, um, I have such a vivid life like part of my life that I, I had of just playing your music. Oh my God. The, the Andy grammar album, the one where it's, uh, 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 Got to keep your head up on yeah. and, and uh, miss me and uh, all these amazing tracks. I try to sneak into a Baha'i conference. Yes, dude. To try to meet you. <laughs> and I hid like I was Persian the whole time. You this is in 2011. No yeah, yeah, my best friend's uh, Persian. It was in uh, Arizona. Yeah. It was next to the JW Marriott. I love that. Yeah. And bro, like by the time I finessed my way in i got in and i was like where is he and you were gone and i was like fuck <laughs> and, 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 and by the way not a great place to swear <laughs> oh, uh, so good. Just super nice people I, and i was like i'm sorry i'll be here next year when he's back Ed. uh Amazing. and then when i came to uh, uh when i came to la the song the biggest man in la yeah i would play that every morning preparing myself to go chase my dreams uh, I love so it. i just want to let you know that uh, this podcast i'm through the roof excited Dude, i can't wait to, so to have cool. to chop it up with you but um i'm a huge fan uh, I'm a nervous host and just let you know that I've always dreamt that this day would happen. Yes, this and is amazing. So, so thank you. Thank you for being here. Yes, Wait, welcome. I feel like the, the first time we met, we like bumped into each other at, at like a... It was a, a, a AR thing. Yeah, like a VR, a VR, VR situation VR somewhere. I don't remember in the world. Bro, that yeah. was the most nerve wracking. I was like, yeah, I can't wait to be in this virtual reality room. And then in real life, I see you and I go, fuck virtual yeah. reality. Like, oh, <laughs> and you were cool. so kind. And, oh, and that you. stuck with me because uh, I think, you know how they say, don't meet your heroes or don't meet people that like you look up to. And that was the point oh. in my life where I was listening to you every day. Oh my God. Chasing the dream. So when I saw you, I was like, no fucking shot, bro. And yeah. I walked up and I said, hey, just like Logan and everybody, like I talked to him for a few minutes and he's like yeah here's my number like maybe one day we can work together yeah. and here we are like, of course dude I years later too yeah and i really appreciate that i i, I want to jump into um to your street performance stage because dude i listen to your music and you're very vivid with your lyrics so i could picture myself <clears throat> in your shoes yeah while you were here and you were trying to cut through the noise of the priests and the dancers and Some all standing. of this stuff to like really get your voice out there what is what does that feeling do to your heart when you were passing by street performers and knowing, be like, dude, I used to, that's how I used to feed myself is like people yeah. tipping me. And now the whole world knows my music. It's, um, it's a really amazing situation. It, it, it was an unbelievable way to start. I, I still just get so amped up um, when I see someone like performing for no one. Do you know what I was going to do? That shit pumps me up, dude. Do you know what I was going to do here? But what? I couldn't frame the timing. Okay. There's this <laughs> little Filipino girl. I was in Huntington Beach and she blew me away. Yeah. Blew mm -hmm. me away. I got on the phone with her mom because uh, it's her momager. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I have a really big guest. I didn't want to mention your name. Sure. 
and I said, I have a really big guest. I would love for her to open up like right here. Oh my God. I would have loved that. Bro. I could, you yeah. know what she straight up said? And this is the cutest thing. She goes, ah, <laughs> my school plays auditions today. I yes, can't it miss it. it. Listen, I was like, Priorities. honey, I was I like, this it. is a little bigger of an opportunity. No, like, <laughs> she didn't give a shit about me. I bro. School play, she's going to be the lead. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it reminded me of you because dude, this, like I saw her and instantly I was like, that's a star. Like you could separate them by a long shot. I th yeah. I think what, I, what, was, what you're making me think of is that there's like, there's, trying to get yourself out there and there's the business of it and there's, you have to feed yourself and there's all this, but, and then there's trying to like game the system and try to understand each situation and it goes to clicks or it goes to like getting people to shows and stuff. And then outside of that is, uh, just kind of connecting to what it is you're here to do and what your purpose is yeah. and why, and like why you're here. And that doesn't care about any of the other stuff. So, and so when someone is singing to no one, I, I get, Oh, you're just like following what your uh, what your intuition is of what you're supposed to do, and you're doing it in the face of the world saying no, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that pumps me up. Because you just love it, yeah. Because you love it, and it takes it really does take that and a lot of that before you find out what it is your voice is or what you have to offer or what's your take or you know. Did you write the Biggest Man in L.A. while you were street performing, or was this? Yeah, chapter? while I was street performing. Because it's vivid, man. It's yeah, like it re like and it's such a good song. I have very um high like taste when it comes to songwriting because i i try to be a songwriter and yeah. i know how cheesy and easy you could get to go through like this little pop bullshit and you could just write what everybody sure. else is writing about but for you to write about your life and then everybody else is like i understand this like fully like <laughs> this is me yeah it is a whole different beast and i'm just i really want to understand like where was it when you found because you say you know you have to write a thousand songs yeah was it during your street performance or was it before you got signed or was it like d like during you getting signed like when was it where you're like now i know who andy grammar is i love talking about it because i love to try to like take away um like demystify it and i'll let everyone know that like so much is possible for them that's like anytime I do one of these things, I want someone to be listening who's a little bit, if, if you're doubting yourself, oh my God, listen to my story. You can do it. I promise mm -hmm. you can do it. And the way that it happens, I like to demystify the idea of like it, like someone, like we like to think that someone has it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that guy's got it. Cause I've been someone who, when I was street performing, people would walk by and go, that guy does not have it. What? A thousand percent. No, shut up. And now in my life, i would be like, oh, you just got it. And I'm like, cool. Well, let's just take it out of the conversation. Cause it's a lot more practical who said that. you didn't have it oh so many people i didn't have it That's did you wear sunglasses honest. and cover your beautiful eyes so i go i go i street performed for four years and the first year was me and my friend and we just sang in harmony together and that was enough to get some tips mm. and we would do like these weird jimmy Eat world covers and we'd sing in harmony and people would throw a couple bucks in and then he went on to start an internet company and so year number two was me alone but without this crutch of harmony that made it like mm. work where are you sleeping in this time i'm in a i'm in a Three bedroom with six people in Santa Monica. Is this where you're staying with what you were just saying his name? Uh, oh, Justin. Justin Baldoni. No, that was a little later. Okay, yes, okay. Sorry, yes. I'm just trying to cover the, the uh, time. Totally. Line. And so then I went out. The second of four years that I street performed was brutal because I was really trying to figure out what I had to offer. And at the moment, it was nothing, right? Like my songs weren't good enough. I didn't have this little harmony trick to pull to get people to stop. And uh, I was just covering a lot of songs to try and figure out like where my voice fit. And, uh, what kind of songs were you covering? Yeah, Literally everything. I was covering like, oh, this is me covering Michael Jackson. I actually had someone come up to me. This is like, I'm playing. Someone comes up and goes like, hey, 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 you seem like a good guy. Like, don't cover that one. Kind of like your friends. <laughs> 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 kind of like your friends. Like, that's not your that's not your move. Uh, what was big at that time? Like, hey there, Delilah was big. Oh, I was yeah. covering that. I was covering um, Apologize. I would beatbox and do Apologize. What year is this? Like 2009? Probably before that. This is maybe 2008, 2007. Um, and slowly I'm covering a bunch of stuff and just mostly being ignored. And then I covered Sunday morning by Maroon 5 and that would make people stop. Oh, really? So you like find, I, I always say it's so uh, discouraging when someone, when people go like, just be yourself. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of actually hard to do. Yeah. You have to, there's a lot of effort and action that it takes to mm -hmm. be yourself, to figure out what it is that you have to offer. Mm -hmm. And so I was covering that song and people would stop. And then I would go back to playing my other songs or other covers and everybody would leave. So I had one thing mm. that was like, this is giving to you. It's not my song. So then I would then that's like the hint that I got. And I wrote 25 songs trying to write Sunday morning. And that's how I got Keep Your Head Up. 
Wow. So that's all. Wow. Like- so you're like slowly piecing together stuff that is actually good. It just takes a lot of work and a lot of persistence. Um, and a, like trying a lot of different things to see like, what do I like? What's my vibe? I, I, I think it can be a little bit discouraging if you, if you feel like you're supposed to know that coming yeah. out the gate. Yeah, but also you chasing a sound to find for your voice to like monitor the crowd and how they like yeah. listen to you and then keep your head up is your lyrics. I know it's coming from your point of view. 100%. So you stumbled into your sound by trying to find a sound. Yeah, I think that that's the game is your when you start, you're, no one's ever just completely original you are trying to pull from different things yeah and then find out like what is what is yours Mm -hmm. i had this dream in that period in my life where i was like had a bunch of camping gear and i was trying to go set up somewhere and every time i would put my camping gear down like someone else would come out and tell me that i couldn't stay there so like i like go to put my stuff down like ryan tedder one republic comes out and goes like i'm here already like you gotta keep going i'm like oh shit totally like pick it up move down like chris martin's like you can't stay here i'm like ah fuck my bad (laughs) (laughs) keep moving and then like john mayer comes out and goes like this is actually my spot i'm like totally (laughs) can't Uh, share this (laughs) and this is artists this is our journey is we this is how we learn what we are is through in my opinion through action You, you you try stuff you cover stuff you work it out to figure out what is where do you where are you fitting and then what is your own take on it you know mm. what song did you write where you're like nah i don't really feel like this is great and then it ends up being amazing i feel like every artist has this totally uh there's a song called fresh eyes that i did not know I was got great. Those fresh. Yeah. are you kidding me bro i felt it was a little bit like too simple Really? Yeah. I remember ending the day and being like, we missed, but it's all good. We'll, no, we <laughs> we'll, missed? We'll do it again. Bro, if I hear that song once, that's yeah, it. We'll For just, the next day, we'll, I'm just know, singing that song. We'll just keep writing. We'll figure it out. And then, you know, it did pretty well. And is there a, is there a studio or, or, or a writing team that you like to work with? Or is there... Yeah. I got, you slowly find your collaborators that really have a high percentage of getting good stuff. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. How... Um, how do you feel that your sound has like changed or been affected from being like a singer songwriter on the streets? It's just you, your creativity versus now having like any studio, any producer at your fingertips. Do you feel like that's changed it in a good way or? Yeah, I think it's cool. I think for me, the through line has been more lyric than sound mm-hmm. always. I've always like listened to the lyric first. And uh, so it's to me, that's the most important thing. Can you get the melody and the lyric correct? And if you get that, correct then the production is really fun i'm open to go a lot of different directions right well that's good so yeah but in the beginning your sound is kind of confined because you can't get anybody to help you so Mm -hmm. it has to sound like a guitar to vocal right right at least when i was starting now you have like computers that can help you do a ton of crazy stuff so that's not necessarily the case right okay so you feel like you can be more creative now than you could before yeah yeah i think so that's awesome yeah that's really cool so your journey continues from it goes from L.A. to New York, New York to L.A. again. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you're a street performer. I mean, I was pretty little when we moved from I was born in L.A. and then I was like four when we got to New York. Okay. Yeah. So the timeline where you get your first record deal, was that because you wrote the song Gotta Keep Your Head Up? Or was yeah. that? Okay. So this all happens. Now your dreams are coming true. When you go touring, how does that work? Like, how do you go? Because when you started, there wasn't like social media. There wasn't like, Not per, really. like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? There wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be here. Guys, come meet me here. Were you nervous that like, I'm not going to sell tickets? Like, is this like. So it's so funny. How old are you? I'm 30. 30. Yeah, I'm uh, about a decade ahead of you. 39. Do you, by the way, you haven't aged, man. Oh, are dude, you that, one of the celebrities that drink the baby bloods or something? It's a really nice lie. Everybody <laughs> come on this show. <laughs> um, I think that that is a really, there's downsides and upsides to it. So I think you're. 10 years removed from where I am is a little more open to the idea of like everybody's in their own niche as opposed to when I came out, uh, keep your head up was a big hit on the radio. And that meant like a lot. Huge. Mm-hmm. There were like gatekeepers. And if you got into the gate, it had like a huge effect. And now what you have is a lot of musicians that are came up w- at the same time period that I was that are trying to refine their footing because the gatekeepers don't matter as much like, or matter so much less. It's now just strictly, you remove the middleman. You remove the middleman. It's just your art and the audience. So now, uh, which I'm into and is fun, but it's a total shift, is like you are competing against everybody. Yep. And not just um, 
everybody in music, you're just, everybody's competing for everybody's attention at all times. Mm -hmm. I like to say, it's not like, it used to be like when I was trying to get into the game, it was me versus who was on the radio at that point. It was like, yeah, Maroon 5 was smashing. I think Kesha was like hitting big. Oh yeah, yeah. All these, like you're trying to get on pop radio and there's probably like 30 acts that are, you're competing against. Um, now they have a track record. So it's like a, a long shot that an unknown guy, street performer is going to get in there. So it's always been really, really hard. But now you want to go on like TikTok and you're competing against like, not just all the musicians, but you're competing against like some guy who, uh, I don't know, learns how to feed his squirrels outside. It's like interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, now yeah. you're competing against that guy too. Yeah. And that is a really interesting shift in how we're all doing this. Your audience yeah. is, uh, is tight with you though. They, oh yeah. They really love you. I yeah. got off the phone with Stenage. Uh, he's a songwriter. He wrote um, 34, 35 for Ariana Grande. Cool. And the first thing he said, the first thing he goes, that guy loves his fans and his fans love him. And yeah. for that to be the first opening line to somebody say about your character, that's so a, sweet. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That really goes to show that you are that street performer and you're just doing it for you guys. And that's, yeah, that's really cool. What's your journey now? I know you're, you're, you've been traveling through like a spiritual journey. I think COVID is yeah. when you had like a little, a little moment to yourself to kind of find what was going on. It was it a little tough for you? Or? Yeah, I, I got rocked in COVID. How was yours? COVID was, it was so weird. Everybody was down in COVID. I was up in COVID. Oh. So like I found myself, I found my lane, I found everything. And then reality hit and I was like, oh, what do I do with this? Or what? Do, how do I go from here? And like, I never thought I would get here. So like, what? how do I like change the lane? And like, so like, I think that overwhelmed me. Uh, but then I kind of reeled it back and I, my spiritual side will overpower my flesh side. So right. like I stay in my prayers so like w my whole journey that I learned is different level, different devil. So like now that I have a lot more on my plate that I used to, instead of me complaining about it, I just thank God and I, and I spend extra time with my God. So that way I could handle my real life day to day. I love it. Um, and how did you deal with your situation? I think I, I just got hit with, uh, I'm a super extrovert. I love to be around people. It's how it like, I, I think I have an engine that runs like really hot and high. And so if I'm alone, I have trouble um, not doing that. Mm. But when I'm with other people, it's like the out. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm with you right now. Yeah. How are we doing? I want to <laughs> give you 100% of who I am and what I have to offer. And like, I hope that I leave, uh, leave more than I take. Yeah. And that's a, like, that's the place that I want to be in. Golden Retriever vibes. Yes. Super gold. Are you a Golden Retriever? <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. bro. Dude, I kind of feel like I'm a golden doodle. Yeah. Like I can get through shit. I'm smart. I've been told <laughs> multiple times in my life that I've, I give off Golden Retriever vibes. Heck yeah, dude. Um, That's so the best vibes. What, what happened during the COVID was that there was a lot of alone time and quiet, and I had to go and realize, that, like, oh, I'm not as put together as I thought I was. You have time to think and reflect. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I got into therapy, and it was really good and awful and great, you know? Just, like, takes a second to figure out some stuff, you know? Do you think that your journey through uh, COVID and, you know, going through therapy, was that your first time in therapy? Yeah. I was actually just talking to Jessica about going through therapy because uh, I feel like when I grew up, therapy had a bad name on it. Yeah. But now I feel like therapy is just like a coach instead of like a coach for health, for like your physical health. This is for my mental health. Um, do you feel like your therapy and time alone is going to help you reflect new types of music? Totally. Are you I excited mean, about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the most recent stuff that's been released has this like a bunch of the songs are kind of about self-worth which is not what I saw coming, to be completely honest. I <laughs> oh, wow. didn't see that being where I, like, where I needed to do work. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, kind of like figuring out how to get worth to not be based on achievement uh, and just understand that it's always there. And that, right. again, my whole career is based on like that idea, even when I say it sounds cheesy to me, to my own ears. But yeah. it's true. Yeah. So, so we got to dig into it. If it's yeah. true, then like, okay, then it's worth trying to fight through and figure out how to make art out of it because it's true. Just, I just, it feels like landmines when I'm trying to write about it. Because like, right. if you don't get it right, it blows up and it's like, terribly cheesy. I wonder if me and you have the same uh, viewpoint when it comes to this. When it comes to being an artist, I, I try to explain this to my friends that have like jobs that they like work for a company. It's different because when you're having a bad day at work, you could just clock out and be like, okay, I don't give a shit. Yeah. But when you're an artist and you're having a bad day or a bad year, it feels like your audience is like really just judging your character. And, mm. and sometimes your achievements and your goals, if you don't hit them in your timeline that you have for yourself, 
for your work, it comes, it bleeds into your personal. Yeah. So then your self worth is like, oh, sh- I'm not really great, or I got lucky, or if it's not not gonna, it's not gonna work out for me. And it's it's really the journey process of like an artist and releasing art is an emotional like. I'm giving you my soul. Yeah. If you don't like it, you don't like me. Like, yeah. and that could conflict with goals. Like if I, for, I'm not an artist, but if I put out a song and I'm like, yo, this is the best version of me. And then like the record label or the gatekeeper is like, nah, fuck this. We don't want this. And you're like, oh, that's me. Yeah. So is that what you kind of totally. mean Totally. So there was, a, there was a couple songs off this latest record. Uh, one of them being Damn It Feels Good To Be Me, which is a, like wasn't necessarily a hit by any means, but it was a hit for me. Mm-hmm. Like my, what I needed, uh, it's th- just this idea of like, I'm going to be this and that's cool. And I have a spoken word poem that starts the show that leads into that song. That was like a really cool way to do, to start my show every night was to me, I, it's a spoken word that like lays out all my insecurities before we get started. Wow. <laughs> that's beautiful. Right? Wow. Like it just like lays it out and then I'm like, cool. Now I don't have to try to be anything for the next hour and a half. Right. I'm just going to give you what I am. And man, when you do that as an artist and you're not attempting to fit into what you think people want, that's where the good shit happens. That's where everybody goes like, oh dude, I want what you got. Dude. But it took me a long time to get there. You know, I think that if you're someone, it sounds like, Similar, if you're someone that, I think my purpose is to make music that is uplifting, right? Yes. Like, that's that's what I'm here for. I mean, you did it for me. Right? Yeah. That's my goal. That's what I'm here for. But then, um, that also takes a lot of courage and a lot of uh, resilience in a landscape that that isn't necessarily what's occurring. Yep. So, if you do that, you're also going to get a lot of hate or you're going to get a lot of people that don't understand you or it's going to be confusing. And it's just going to be up to you to hold true to it. Mm-hmm. And in, in a lot of situations, um, do it and not be understood. Right. I could, like, if you would have told me this a year ago, yeah. I would not understand you. Yeah. Right now, I can understand you more than ever because when I was on the podcast, I'm on a podcast called Impulsive, and I was just speaking from my heart. Didn't It was the first time where the audience actually got to hear me talk. This is a very yeah. real conversation. And I talked about my spiritual side. And I was at an event. And somebody came up to Logan and he goes, yo, I love your boxing. And he was like talking about his boxing. And he turns to me and his eyes were water. And he goes, hey, man, the thing you talked about, your spirituality, it made me talk to God for the first time. And it was right there where I was like, dude, the whole thing that I've been running away from and hiding from and be like, yo, people are going to think I'm cringe or weird or stupid. I should keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Was really the thing that I should have done. This is what we want. Yes. As the public... When someone comes out and, and takes a stand for who they are, um, we don't even have to agree with them. But a lot of times we go like, oh, that's dope. Yeah, oh, but why don't we do it? Because it's terrifying. Okay, that makes sense. And you can feel when somebody's <laughs> being truly like authentic. And like it's I not- remember, yeah, I was at a, like things were just starting to take off for me. And we we're doing like one of these huge radio shows with like, you know, 10,000 people. And I'm going on after someone who's like doing backflips on stage and has like backup <laughs> dancers that are wearing nothing and they're all so sexy and so cool and they're all doing their thing. And I'm backstage just with my acoustic guitar. <laughs> and I'm like, I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> like, how am I going to go compete with like this super sexy, like there's like all these screens and this guy's going nuts and it's incredible. And uh, they, I, you know, you start to second guess, like, does this crowd want what I have? Mm. I don't think I'm equipped. Um, and so I get up there terrified, I absolutely imagine. terrified. Which, which stage in your career were you? Were, is this it like is the very like, beginning this or is like the beginning? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is the beginning. And I'm like, I don't have what you need. I'm about to go like, jing, 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 jing. <laughs> um, but I, I, I start singing, keep your head up. And that's exactly what they want. Just, mm-hmm. you know, and the crowd starts going crazy and they're all singing this song along. So, so you, you can get thrown off of your center as an artist when you see someone else doing their thing, which is what they're supposed to do, which mm-hmm. is be authentically themselves. Oh my God, if you're put here to be like slick and cool and sexy and amazing, like that's your thing. That is not my thing. <laughs> so in those moments when you're up next to them, you're like, I think I'm the worst. I don't know that I have what I need. Um, and then if you hold on to who you are and double down on it, uh, a lot of times that's exactly what everybody wants. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. That it's is such really a true beautiful. statement. Yeah. You know? Certainly for everybody because it's 
now it's so easy to see online, you know, regardless of like who you are, what you're doing, <clears throat> but you see what everybody else is doing around you and you feel like, oh, they look like this and they're doing this. And so like, oh, I need to get on that too. And I need yeah. to, you know, wear those kinds of things or, but in reality, it's like, no, we don't need to all be like each other just because that's what's popular at the moment. Yeah. You know, can I do this poem for you? Oh, yeah. oh my God. Oh, I'll just cut it out if you don't want it. No, okay. no, what? What, please. <laughs> oh, here we go. So if you come to one of my shows, we'll see if I still do it next tour, but. Uh, like big, big intro, blah, 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 lights, camera, things are going nuts. And then it just goes like, vroom, and I come on stage and I do this. Somewhere along the line, I learned that I was not enough. So behind this smile is a guy who tried but could never really trust that he would be believed or well received just for being who he was. So now when I speak, I feel the need to drop a couple fucks. So I don't lose you, so you won't leave. So you won't think that I'm too sweet, deep-seated insecurities of how I'm seen, how I'm perceived. I'm exhausted. I just want to be. I caught my break in music when I just turned 26. I was told I was too old, too grown, and that I had a lot to fix. So we scrubbed my face. I lost some weight. We tried desperately to hide my age. And that's when I began to play for a trophy in the culture game. Now, if you want to star for the culture game, I am not your man. I waited till marriage to have sex and alcohol is not my jam. And I've tried my best to look mysterious with a Diet Coke in my hand. But far too often I start conversations apologizing for who I am. What a shame when our internal flame feels the need to dim itself down. We work so hard to fit in. We forget we were made to stand out. So shine your light and speak your truth even if your voice is shaking. Like Oscar Wilde said, be yourself. Everybody else is taken. You think God would bring you here not to trust your intuition? What if the reason you always feel left out is because you're the thing that's missing? So here's to the courageous ones that don't fit in but are okay with it. Ones that write new stories on blank pages. Ones that lean into their uniqueness, trailblazing ones. And here's to the magic that only you can bring. And here's to the audacity it takes to spread your wings. And here's to the light bringers that know it's hard as hell but continue to show up unapologetically themselves. And here's to the voice that is deep in your soul and wants to speak up and inherently knows that there's beauty in you and deserves a microphone. So step one is to realize that you've been trying too hard. Step two is being cool with just letting down your guard. Step three is to agree that not everyone is going to like you. Step four is coming to terms. That's just something you got to fight through. Step five is a deep dive below who you think you're supposed to be. Step six is to identify the areas in which you do not agree. And step seven is to feel the tension that authenticity often brings. Step eight is to be okay if no one listens while you sing. Step nine is when you find your sense of self and are at peace. And step 10 is when you genuinely believe there's no one else you'd rather be. And without an ounce of irony, you let these seven words slip free. Damn, it feels good to be me. <laughs> for me personally... You wanted me to cut that out? For me personally, to start the show there frees me to like not be insecure. Because I just like laid it all out for you. So now I can just be what I am and not worry for the rest of this set whether I have to explain myself, whether you are going to judge me. Whether you, like I'm taking the power. I'm going like, this is what I am. Yeah. Hope this works for you. If wow. this does not work for you, I apologize for wasting your time. But this is where I'm headed. This is what we're going to do. You know? that, that was... That was unbelievable. That, I felt like I just absorbed all of your therapy and just <laughs> in one poem. And then it sounds like, it sounds like I'm making a joke and I, and, and I'm truly with all my heart saying this, like, thank you one for saying that. I think I'm going to like rewatch that a few times and try to let it marinate. That thank you. Cause so I, I needed to hear that now more than <laughs> like, any, like, yeah. any time. Right. Um, you made Jessica cry. She had to go wipe her eyes. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, I'm trying not to cry. Oh, my what the fuck dude cry. It'd be better for the views. What's wrong with you? No, but, it was so, it was just so, it was so authentic and it was so um just everything that you wanted to say from your heart just came out like it was yeah it was really good it's all good it's <laughs> up to hey, man mean, you made my woman cry dog <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> that was very beautiful man and, it, it, it takes a lot to be someone that smiles in this world it just takes a lot you know yeah. you're like and people super need it. There's a lot, the world is shitty right now. There's a lot of things that are wrong. And if you want to be someone that comes and is, and, and is bringing a light, uh, th that's a burden sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so you got to figure out your own way of making sure that you can stay up and not doubt yourself and, and figure it out. You know? How did you find these really beautiful morals you stand by? 
like the waiting till marriage, drinking's not your jam, like all of these things that an average man struggles with, mostly probably because they have identity issues, but what what who put you on these pillars of morals? Like I mean, straight up Baha'i faith is so dope. I was I was raised a Baha'i, which is a world religion based on the unity of religions. And it's uh, the prophet is Baha'u'llah who came to the, uh, Iran in the mid 1800s. And it just and spoke to your like, heart. It was just it made a lot of sense to me. Um, a lot of the a lot of the teachings are like really beautiful. And uh, it's been something in my life that I've has been a big part of my life for my whole life. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. We. God, I love that. It's because you're doing it, man. And, and it's different from like a kid in high school who, who's standing on these morals and hasn't made it. But mm -hmm. you're giving the people that want to walk in your lane like, okay, if Andy could do it, I could do it. Mm. And like being in this industry, like the reason why my sister is here is because one day I called her and I said, hey, if you don't come out here, I'm out. I can't do this industry anymore. Yeah. I can't. It's It's just a bunch of me, me, me. How can I stab you for me to get another dollar? And like... And, it, and it, it just took my soul away because not a lot of people want to give that smile or give that time or or like say, you know what, let me stop worrying about myself and like help my neighbor out. I grew up in a very Middle Eastern culture, so it was always like, what can I do for you? You know, like, what yeah. do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? Come, please. I don't care what time it is. Like, no, I'll take care of the bill. Like, I went from like consistently like, let me take care of you or let, not, let me take care of you. That type of mentality to like this culture now it's just really freaking refreshing to hear you talk bro i also think um it's gotten harder you know even even as simple as like uh, the the self selfie camera mm -hmm. like that i didn't grow up with that that's a whole thing that that is literally you looking at yourself all the time <laughs> uh, in a way that just didn't happen when I was growing up yeah, that I think is really difficult when you talk about like, how are you getting, what makes us happy is service and being of service to other people. Mm -hmm. And so the focus right now, it, may, it breaks my heart a little bit for young kids or teenagers or even college students. Like uh, so much of what you're being asked to do to stay relevant in life, if yeah. in any business that you have anything is like, what's your channel and how's it doing yeah. and how are you and what's going on and how do you look in that? And it's just like so much focus on yourself that uh, it inevitably will make you unhappy. Do you right. think the pendulum is going to swing back into more of a... I hope so. I, I mean, it, I don't know. I don't think this is sustainable. <laughs> it can't be, right? It can't be. Just like internally, to, to care this much about yourself is like not good. It, it can't be good. It really can't. I got into um, this, you know how they say, uh, I'll take care of you if you take care of me? Yeah. I got into this new thought process that somebody said to me, and it's, I'm going to take care of myself so then for I could take care of you. You take care of yourself so then therefore you could take care of me. Mm -hmm. And that is a really beautiful way of looking at things because I feel like when you say, you know, it's really hard to have a smile out here. Yeah. I think people really underestimate how hard it is to be a kind person when people take advantage of your kindness. Yeah. And especially when you're in an industry like this, it's always fighting to, you know, like, oh, I got to push him down so I could get up. And that's in any line of work. I mean, even if you're uh, at a nine to five and you're trying to get a promotion, you're, you're competing sure. with your people. So they have this cutthroat idea of like, oh, if I can't win, you can't win. Yeah. So how is it that you like, okay, because there's a lot of people that there's Christians that come and there's Jewish people that come into this industry, but they lose their face value morals when it comes to chasing their goals. What made you, Andy, not sacrifice your morals for another level up? You'd rather sleep on somebody's couch and perform in the streets than do the things that everybody around you was doing. It's kind of a mixture of stuff. I remember, I remember watching Jerry Seinfeld an interview. They said, like, why don't you curse and he's in, your, in your act? And he's like, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, straight up, like, it doesn't, like, what I'm here to do uh, doesn't work that way. And... So I, I literally can't even access what my magic is and what I have to offer if I um, if I don't practice what I preach to to the best of my ability. That's that's like my lane, you know. <clears throat> so that seems to be that has really helped me. And I'm not at all perfect. And a lot of times the things I sing about are the stuff that I'm struggling with. So I'll be having like a really shitty day, uh, and then I'll get on stage, and it's like my recentering because I'm singing about I've made music the thing that is like really the most pure in sometimes in my life 
where like, oh, I go on stage and I sing a song about my aspirations and that helps me like realign to what it is that I want to be. Rejuvenate. Yeah. You. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Is there any projects coming up that you're excited about? Um, <laughs> yeah. We have, is it on Friday that this drops? The poem? Yep. I have a poem that's dropping. Uh, Not this one that you just did? No, this is a, we'll have to figure out, we'll record yeah. that one, put it out. Yeah. There's, a, there's a poem called I Need a New Money, which is just my relationship with money. It's really fascinating. And we, I, I was do, like I do poetry in the set leading into different songs. So I have another song coming called New Money that's uh, <coughs> Love is the New Money. And that one is a song that's coming. And so I, I wrote this poem before that. And it went over so well in the show that we actually like, well, we should put that one out. That's actually something we should put out. So then oh, we put music amazing. behind it. So the song's coming out or the poem's coming the out? The poem's Friday? coming out. We put, we put music behind it. We made this video that is so sick. I'm so excited about it. Um, and it's getting like already reactions are like everybody's like helping and pushing stuff. And we have like a huge YouTube premiere and they're doing like the big sunset marquee thing. They're doing, like, it's going to be awesome. Going on the Today Show to go perform it. Um, should I do it? And just you can cut it out too. Real quick. <laughs> if you could, I was going to ask you, are we allowed to, are we allowed to have it on this episode? I'm sure we are. Yeah. Right. Cause of this course. one, this episode comes out Thursday. Yeah. So I, I don't it, think it's gonna be a problem. Yes. So this yeah. is an exclusive. Woo! This is an exclusive. <laughs> and the morning show, we beat the morning show. Okay. If we you, should just put this yes. on Patreon. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> if, if you like it, go check out the video. Cause man, we, the video is really, really cool. Send me um, the link. I'm going to put it in my description. So that way. So, uh, I'm always fascinated by this idea of worth and where we get it from. And I feel like we just, if you grow up in America, like it, it is the default is that your worth is associated with how much money you make. And that's like not a new idea, but it weighs on all of us all the time. So, uh, let me just, I just got to get into it. What is Absolutely. Jess, could you give me a napkin, please? Okay. By the way, you were just the way you were talking right now. I thought that was the poem, and I was just oh, like, here we go. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, Yo, you too, right? And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, I am not merely an economic unit. I am human. How far off are we that that can sound confusing? I want to strive for more, but oftentimes I don't know how to. Yeah, I need a new money that measures my inherent value. What's your salary? What's your rate? What's your hourly wage? What's your position? Your commission? How much are you for the day? When we meet somebody new, what is the first thing that we say? What do you do, a.k.a.? How much money do you make? And then we take that information and we sort it in our brains. Assess the value, calculate where to put them on the page. The hierarchy of importance. I mean, this is just insane. You're telling me that we've agreed to tie self-worth to what we're paid? You're telling me that we've agreed to tie self-worth to what we're paid? Well, what a grave mistake to make. What terrible advice to take. If the scoreboard counts in dollars, what kind of game you think we'll play? Yo, I am not merely an economic unit. I am human. How far off are we that that can sound confusing? I want to strive for more, but oftentimes I don't know how to. I need a new money that measures my inherent value. But like my four-year-old asking why until she's blue in the face, my inner child inquires about this money that we make. Why? Well, I make money because I need it. Why? So I can have financial freedom. Why? So I can keep up with the Joneses. Why? So someday I can own a home. And why? So I can climb the social ladder. Why? So I feel like I even matter. Why? Because I'm constantly worried that I won't be enough. Why? Because I'm worried without money, I'm not worthy of love. Yo, I am not merely an economic unit. I am human. How far off are we that that can sound confusing? I want to strive for more, but oftentimes I don't know how to. I need a new money that measures my inherent value. But what if the scoreboard tallied love? What if the stock market valued love? What if your 401k was judged by how much you lifted others up? What if the best we could get was love? What if we were impressed with love? What if the status in class was love? What if it mattered how much you love? What if the money was not enough? What if we worked nine to five for love? What if the point of this life was love? What if the point of this life was love? Yo, I am not merely an economic unit. I am human. Sick. Sick. Wow. Yo, look, she's wrecked, bro. <laughs> Jessica. Dude, you are like a, you just drip with these talents, huh? Oh, man. Yeah, you have a way with words. It's really, the word stuff is really fun because that's what I care about the most. And then when you add music to it, there's only so much complexity you can add. So like you have to be very delicate. So pop, 
songwriting is like I love it because you can make these little potions that hopefully explode in people. Mm -hmm. But the poetry is really fun too because you can just kind of like go off on words, you know. Yeah, you can really just like speak out your entire thought the all whole the way thought. through and yeah. just keep going. Yeah. When pop songwriting is a little more like, how can you do it really simply? Right. Which is fun too. That's like an art. Yeah. You know? Also, when you when you speak these poems. They really do make me look at things differently. Like I, I, I noticed that as humans we do that, but yeah. I didn't reflect on it until you mentioned it. So I wonder how many people you do that for. Where they, they, you know how it's like they say even when you sell something, it takes somebody to look at it seven times mm -hmm. yeah. for them to realize like, oh, I want that. Mm -hmm. So these poems you are doing that are so catchy and so beautifully orchestrated that people want to maybe hear it twice or three times yeah. Yeah. maybe now the message could get across so I, it's a powerful thing you're doing there's really music is an art in general has such an important space a lot of times we don't understand what it's doing or why it's important it gets a little and we know we love it and then it feels good and then we're like in, entertained by it but i love there's this i would sit on the promenade when i was street performing and read this essay that i found on the internet somewhere i gotta forget the guy's name is paul it was like Paul something for a Boston conservatory and it was like um, orientation and it's this essay that I'll send you. It's so good. And he talks about how like um, if you were a doctor, you study like crazy and you work really hard because you know that someday someone's going to come in to your office and like need you to know what you're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> or yeah. to like save you. Yeah. If you're a lawyer, like you better know your shit because yeah. someone's going to come in your office and like, oh my God, I'm in trouble and I need what you have. And if you're a musician, like people are going to come in with hearts that are weary and broken and uh, you, you are the one that can make them whole to head out. Like once they've left your show, you could put them back together in ways that other, these other people cannot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like to think of music as like spiritual chiropractors where you can like go in and give someone an adjustment. And we've all felt that. We've been to a show and been like, ah, oh, I needed that. I can't pinpoint what it is that just happened, but I know that was super important yeah. for my life right now, yep. you yeah. know? And that is, when you're focused on that, then everything starts to get really interesting. Right. When you're focused on like, I gotta be successful. It's like, cool, dude, go do that somewhere else. I, we don't, that doesn't help us. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you find that mindset? Was it when you already had the success or was it after you found that success? Well, what you find, what's great about street performing is that you realize really quickly, are you being of service or not being of service? Like nobody cares about what you're doing. And you can either go like, man, everybody, uh, everybody on the street today was like, they were way off. <laughs> or you can oh, go so like, it, there is, you know how like when you go to work, there's some days that are weird. Is it like that for a mass yes. group of people? No, but but what I'm saying is like every, either everybody else is wrong or like I'm just not that good. Or yet. <laughs> <laughs> so like that makes sense. it's just a lot of effort and time. You know, the other thing that I I love there, it was Ira Glass talked about being an artist and he said the reason you get into art because you have good taste in the art. So like you get into it because you're like you have good taste in music or something and then you start to create music and it's tough because you're the first one you have good taste to know that what you're doing is shitty. And the only way to get what you're creating to be up at the level of your taste is to just do it a billion times. Oh, wow. And you do, you do, you do, you do, and then you get up to where it's at. So I think in your journey, going back to the beginning of this conversation, it might just be that you need to do it a billion more times if you want to get what you're creating up to where your taste is at. So I don't know that stop is the answer, but also, like, there's a lot of different areas to do that in. I would, I would love to join your writing session. Not to, like, obviously, I'm not going to sit there and, like, oh, I think it should sound like this. Yeah. I just want to observe it. And I just want to be a part of the room because I know when it comes to creating, there's a, there's a magic and like, there's a, there's this energy in that room. That's just irreplaceable. Yeah. And I would love to watch your process. Cause yeah. I feel like that would be pretty cool. It's really, uh, it's fun. It's a lot uglier than it sounds like. It's like, it's a lot of, um, just swinging and trying stuff and not yeah. being worried about what it's going to sound no, but like I love and that. editing it later. Yeah. I love that. Do you have a specific process or do you just like get an idea and then you write it down and get to it later? Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of like melodic ideas and I have a lot of lyric concepts and then I get into the either by myself or with other people and start to try to see what sticks, mm -hmm. you know, and play around with it, play around with it. Yeah. And then you get like kind of down the road and you're like, this isn't making me freak out. Let's just try to something completely different. And yeah. Jump, 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 jump. And before you know it, Something is there. Mm -hmm. How many uh, different versions of uh, like keep your head up was like how many did you have like just one version? Yeah, of it? I mean, uh, a lot of times me and my manager talk a lot about how like it takes you, you can get he's a football now. You can get 90 yards down the field. That happens pretty quick. 
and the last 10 yards are really hard to get it to be great. Got it. It takes a lot to like fine tune and tweak to make it be up, up to the level of something like, oh my God. Yeah. Art and music, like especially these days, like unless it makes you go like, holy shit, <laughs> then like it's nothing. Mm. Do you like still play good doesn't do anything for you. Yeah. Do you still play the trumpet? A little bit, dude. I throw people off at the end of my show with like a little bit of trumpet. And then I put it down and go like, wish I could play more, it's time to go, like later. <laughs> <laughs> it started off with a high, this yeah. beautiful poem. Yeah. Then at the end, it's like, <laughs> uh, I guess I can't yeah, do it. Like, That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. I just uh, listened to your new song, These Tears. Yeah. And um, it was beautiful, by the way. Thank you. It made me choke up. Mm -hmm. um, but so is that about your mom? Yeah. Perfect? Right. So is that the first time that you've released a song uh, since her passing? Do you feel? Oh, man, it's been really I almost am worried that I do too many songs about it, but oh, it, yeah? people don't seem to mind. Um, that was like a huge part of my life. I lost my mom when I was 25. Right. And uh, so I, I've written a ton of songs about grief and about missing her and about mm -hmm. that whole process. Yeah. Yeah. D does it affect you that... Um she passed away right before you got your, your deal? I mean, there's no question that, uh, in my mind, like if you hook me up to a lie detector test right now, yeah. you're like, do you believe that your mom is pulling strings and she had a huge effect on why you are where you are? I'd be like, yes, undeniably. I have a momager like in the, in the clouds that is making serious moves on my right. behalf. Amen. Which also then makes you feel, brings in humility, right? Mm -hmm. Like I know that it's not just my talent or my drive. Like there's other things that are, that are happening here. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Guardian Angel. That is really awesome. Yeah. Jess, could you give me uh, the playing deck of cards just for the like other part of it? I just want to, I'm going to show them a magic trick. Oh, hell yeah, <laughs> dude. Are you a magician? <laughs> well, you're about to find out. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, dude, I love magic. I know. That's why I'm about this to. This uh, is awesome. This is going to be, this is going to be pretty special right there. Wow. Jessica, hand me those. See that sure. she pulled those decks out. Yeah. Right. I want to check it. Make sure it's a. I believe. Make sure it's a real deck. This looks good. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Okay. So wait, what's your what's your history with magic? Are you like a magic guy? Pick a card. Okay. Look at the card. Got it. This is. <laughs> Put it back. Okay. Anywhere you want. Yeah, mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Okay. And then. Is this your card? No. All right. I'm not really a musician. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe it's. Are you kidding me, bro? I thought maybe it'd be cool. really cool. If I, I gotta be it. honest. When, <laughs> just by the way he was shuffling, I was like, this isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a problem. <laughs> I was like, you know? this is news to me. Uh, I, I really thought the, I had something. The shuffle that's occurring is not, <laughs> yeah. good. He went, not good. He went like this. Yeah. It was like, didn't even move. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Well, I uh, I really appreciated hanging out with you and Dude, getting to know you. lovely to be here. Thank, Thank you so you much for coming. for having me. Best is, of luck on everything that you're doing. Is there any tours going on or anything they should know about? I don't know. We can, for sure, we're going to tour, so stay tuned. I can't announce it quite yet because that's like a whole thing. Um... We got an album coming. We got more songs coming. Um, for sure, on Friday, this video is, is coming with this with the I Need a New Money poem, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, I, I'm honored to be here. And, Dude, thank I'm And I hope that someone away, feels yeah. more encouraged by the time they're done with this thing. Yeah, That's the us, goal. man. You yeah. made my <laughs> sister cry. We're She's inspired. in her feelings. I'm over here like... <laughs> Now I'm going to have to start writing poems for my girlfriend oh, to get some type shit. of emotion. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Thank you again, bro. I really appreciate it. Keep doing you, man. It. It's awesome. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure, bro. Shit.